Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about dahlias. This is my first time to grow dahlias and what a wonderful experience I had. I'm surprised to see amount of varieties which are available and you can select colors, shapes and height as per garden design or space. I will start from sewing method and share my experience on pinching dahlias, deadheading and why you need to do this, how to look after and in the end, how to collect seed and tubers after first blooming season. This video captured an interesting journey over 31 weeks, which I started with over 30 seeds, and they have returned me hundreds of seeds and a lot of good size tubers. I'm using a dahlia variety called Disco Dancer. Flowers are good size and have very bright colors. The plants are just under one meter tall, so a good addition in any garden and can be grown easily in the containers. The seeds are good size and easy to handle compared to like of strawberries. Only problem with seed is that you are not sure about the color of flowers, but I guess this is a surprise factor and every new bloom brings a new hope and excitement. For sowing, I'm using here seed propagator with 40 cell and multi-purpose compost. This particular seed propagator is quite handy with a base tray to hold extra water and a clear lid to lock moist and temperature, which are very beneficial for germination. Drop the seed in the cells and lightly cover with compost. I have been quite successful with this approach and you don't really need to sow very deeply. You can start sowing as early as February until late April. Do remember to add a label Give a good amount of water and leave a few minutes to let extra water to drain. Move cells to tray and cover with lid. In case you have lid or not, you can leave this seed tray in a sunny area. If weather is cold, then best to keep tray indoor in a sunny spot. Close to window or inside greenhouse will be perfect. I generally keep all my sewings in the sunroom and don't really worry about temperature. I think double glazing windows are helping here. It is always best to sow few extra seed because 100% germination is not always possible. Like here, I only need around 30 seedlings but starting with 40 seeds. In next few days, you may find few cells getting dry. You can gently spray them with water. Best to use spray bottle like this and they do job perfectly. At this stage, as long as compost is fairly moist, then this should be fine for germination. Before the end of week one, sign of life can be seen and few seedlings are starting to appear. After week two, a lot of healthy seedlings are appearing, which is a very good sign. You can also see here lid is doing the job and holding the moist and temperature to encourage successful germination. After week three, true leaves are appearing, which are slightly pointy compared to first two rounded leaves. True leaves are very important for plant growth and will be part of plant for the rest of its life. If you are new to gardening, best to wait for a few set of true leaves before transplanting any seedling. At this stage, if you don't have seedling in few cells, you can reseed them to get more seedlings. In case you are having very leggy seedling, this is generally due to lack of sunlight. If you keep seed trays in a sunny spot, then you shouldn't face this issue. After week 3, I also stopped using lid. In week 5, seedlings are getting bigger and stronger. A lot of true leaves are appearing and do remember to water whenever required. I use spray bottle for this job at this stage. Now I also started to plan for first transplant. I will be transplanting them in bigger containers but before you do so, it is best to climatize the seedlings. This will help seedlings to cope with outdoor condition compared to indoor environment where condition is very ideal and controlled. I started to leave seed trays in a semi-shaded area of the garden for 10 minutes a day to an hour for next two weeks. I have not done this every day but whenever weather was warm and not rainy, I left tray in garden. In week 7, seedlings now have good few sets of true leaves and time to transplant now. I'm using a disposable cup with drainage holes and filled with multi-purpose compost. Create a footprint to fit in seedlings root to transplant all the true leaves, not the stem, clear the side of the cell 
and take the seedling out. This was my first ever transplant. Bit nervous, but glad that this delicate job is done. There is a good root system, a good size, but the compost was very dry. Later, I learned that if you water seedlings before transplant, then it is more easy to handle and transplant. Finally, here are all the seedlings. Do remember to water well and leave them in a sunny area of the garden. After week 8, plants are getting bigger and healthier. The leaves of Talia have this beautiful pointy edges and this do add an extra feel. For next two weeks, plants are getting bushier and main stem is getting more brownish color. But this is very normal and nothing to worry about. You can also see a lot of roots development in white color. This is why I love clear containers, which gives you a very different view of plant growth. In week 11, I did final transplant to containers which are 10 liter and have a diameter of around 29 centimeter with depth of 23 centimeter. These containers come with drainage holes and ready for the job. I also find 10 liter containers more functional in garden as after the season you can reuse for spring flowering bulbs like of tulips, crocuses and hyacinths. For transplant, I'm using here multi-purpose compost and you can use similar disposable cup to create a footprint for dahlia plant. At this stage, transplant is very easy as plant is much stronger and all you need to do is to hold the stem in between two fingers, put the plant upside down and give few squeezes to disposable cup and everything will slide down easily. You can see here good roots development, a sign of healthy plant. Drop the plant in footprint and do remember to add a support. For this variety, any support with length around 1 meter will do the job. In the end, do give good amount of water. You may not need to tie dahlia plant with support at this stage, but in few weeks, this will be job on and off to keep plant steady and center of container. So keep tying up with twine whenever required. Keep the container in a sunny area of the garden and make sure to have good watering routine. Now I have few hours of job to get all transplant done and in the meanwhile, you can watch this in a fast mode. week 12 I started to see new birds. Soon these birds will be becoming flowers. A lot of side shoots are appearing which is good because more side shoot means more new flowers. In next two weeks dahlias are very bushy now and I am hoping to see first bloom very soon. In week 14 new bird is started to show the color and I guess this will be a red color. You can see the color appearing on the new bird. After few days, here is first bloom, absolutely fantastic and for such display, I think it was worth to wait 14 weeks. I was surprised to see how this red flower stand out from the greenery of all dahlia plants. Another yellow bloom is getting ready and can't wait to see full bloom. Dahlia flowers are certainly very beautiful but I noticed that the back side of these flowers is even more amazing to see. This one here is backside of red flower and I love the combination of white lines, petal shapes and color tone. Fantastic to watch. For next 12 weeks, I had a joy to see a lot of flowers of different colors. Bees were buzzing during this time around dahlia flowers and I believe with our little effort, we can help bees and other insects and create a small ecosystem in our gardens. Now I will leave you to have a look at the key highlights during the blooming season. After this, I will discuss advantages of deadheading, needs to pinch dahlia and much more, so stay tuned.
Deadheading is all about encouraging plants to produce more flowers. Dahlia has five stages. In stage one, you will find new bird which is meant to become a flower. New birds are very rounded and you can see development of petals and can also identify the color of the expected flower. Here are some examples of new birds. Stage two is a blooming stage where new bird will transform into a beautiful flower. After the blooming period is stage three, where you can see flower head in a cylindrical shape in early days and slowly becoming very pointy in stage four after a few days. After a few weeks is stage five, where head will be ready for seed collection. These heads are very light weighted compared to heads in stage three and four. Deadheading is simply to inform plant to produce more blooms instead of using energy to produce seeds. Here is a perfect example where you can see a new bird very rounded, a flower head very cylindrical in shape and a flower. For deadheading, you need to cut flower heads and flowers which are few days old. You can cut stem at any point but I prefer to cut just close to the joint here. You can also do same with flower heads during deadheading. If you are looking for seed collection, then best to leave few flower heads per plant. After three days, I had this wonderful bloom from same new bird. The flower head is now have a slightly different shape and appear to have very pointy tip. Here is same flower head after eight days and hopefully will produce seeds in next few weeks. You can keep cut flowers in regular tap water and they will be fresh for a few days. Every time I do deadheading, I top up vases in the house with new flowers. I prefer to stop deadheading just close to end of blooming season. This will help to keep few heads for seed collection. In the end, a good deadheading routine keeps the plant overall look better, give you a lot of cut flowers and encourage plants to produce more blooms. Pinching dahlia is a way to get more side shoot and this leads to produce more blooms from same plant. I try to compare two dahlia plants with and without pinching and try to see what differences can be expected. In week nine, I did pinch one of the dahlia plant. Perfect time to pinch is when you have at least two to three sets of true leaf as you can see here. Simply cut the stem just above fully developed true leaf and you are good to go. After two weeks, you can see a lot of side shoots are appearing. In week 12, you can see difference between with and without pinching dahlia plant. The plant without any pinching have now new birds at the top and plant is much taller. In case of pinched version, it is more growing towards sides in 360 degree due to having a lot of side shoot, but will have very late new birds or blooms. Here is a closer look of pinch version of plant and you can see a lot of side shoes. In the end, pinching is a good way to get more blooms and if you want to have bigger size blooms, then you can also cut new side shoots. What is best approach? I guess this is very personal choice or style and depends on your garden design or expectations. Collecting seeds and tuber after blooming season is fun and something I really look forward to do. The process do take few weeks, but it is important to understand that seed collection will not guarantee same flower colors as parent plants. But if you could save tuber, then certainly you can show about colors. You can also have same color if you grow via dahlia cuttings. I think collected seeds are a bit of surprise package and you can end up with fabulous shade array of colors which are very unique. In week 20, I made few homemade labels and started to attach with dahlias which had my favorite colors. I'm very hopeful to get few tubers for next season. Let's start with seed collection process. In week 29, this is how dahlia plant look like and flower heads are ready for seed collection. To collect the seed, I prefer to use a disposable cup and cut the heads directly in that, easy to manage. It's been raining for a few days, so leave these heads in a sunny or warm spot to get dry. Here is my final collection from one plant only. After two weeks, heads are dry and I started to open flower heads. 
you can keep the pointy tip up and open flower head. There is a bit of cleaning process to this as you can see. So let's have a look at this. Finally, these are seed, a good number of seed from one flower head. Here are clean version of seed and glad to see a good number of seed for experiment in next season. You can store them in a paper bag or plastic bag and leave them in a cool dry place. Let's see what color they will bring in next season. Do remember to add a label and date for reference. Now I'm proud owner of my own Dahlia seed, my first ever seed collection. In week 29, I started to recover tubers as well. Cut the stem at least 1 or 2 inches above compost level and check the container for any sign of tuber. Make sure to use a clean tool to avoid spread of diseases. Here is the tuber and gently remove the loose soil and give it a good wash. Here is the recovery, looking a good sized tuber. Finally, this is a good sum up picture. This was a yellow colored dahlia plant which I started from a single seed and now recovered good number of seed and a good sized tuber as well. Happy days. Here are my final 9 tubers which I have recovered and have given me my favorite colors during the season. I will look forward to have them back blooming in next season. Some tubers are small and some very good size but overall I think this is a good outcome. I saw a lot of posts around question, can you able to get tubers after first season? My answer to this is certainly yes. Before storing these tubers, you need to make sure that tubers are dry to prevent any rotting during storage stage. I left these tubers in a sunny area whenever possible for next two weeks to let them dry completely. Weather here was very rainy so it took a while to get them dry. As long as they are dry, they are ready to be stored over winter. To store tubers, I am using here a cardboard box with a paper lining. Create a base with a dry compost. It is very important that compost is dry. I am using here multi-purpose compost. Add tubers on top and cover with compost. Add any remaining tubers and add a final layer of compost to cover them well. I'm adding here a final paper lining and box is ready for storage. You can leave the box in cool dry place which is frost free. I hope that I can able to see tubers blooming again in next season and welcoming bees and other insects again in my garden. In the end, here is timeline to understand dahlia plant growth with details on key events or jobs to do over the season. If you like this video, leave a comment or give a like. Do share which varieties you are planting this year in the comment section. If you want to follow my gardening journey, then do subscribe to my channel and follow on Instagram. Link is available in description. Take good care of yourself and I'll see you next time with a new gardening project.